What's up everybody? It is Matt from Electric All Wheel and today we have Jeremy Turnburn with us and we are going to have a look at the Aerial Rider Kepler. What do you think about this bike? Dude, I love it, man. It sticks with what I like in the class 26x4 fat tire e-bikes, man. It doesn't get much better than those. Feels like riding in the truck. I agree. Uh, this bike, for what it is and the price point at $16.99, is unbelievable for its size and class in terms of frame style, wheel, etc. That's why this bike deserves a look, and we're going to take you through our version and our opinion wow. of an overview and review of the Aerial Rider Kepler. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary, and if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Uh, I'm hoping there'll be some riding, even though the, the summer heat is coming. So it'll get them out. Yeah, They're we're not gonna sure get them out. We'll get them morning and evening. That's, that's when right. everybody's coming. Ebikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Check out that Facebook group. Get in there, make an event, and go for a ride with your friends. Here we go. So the focus of this review is just to, to really go over the features, that, the key features of this bike, and then recognize that the price point is what makes it so unique. Very first thing, what's the top feature that you like about the Kepler? The acceleration, man, All right off the bat. Boy, that is the cool. first right off the bat. Other than that, I, I love the, uh, the handlebar setting, how they gave you the extension, you know, yeah, it, it sits you up higher yeah, uh, up without right. having to have any modifications. It's right out the box that way. So that yeah. attributes to the thousand watt custom motor. It's Befeng thousand watt custom motor and the 52 volt battery. Yeah. And that thing's no slouch. It's got 20 amp hours. It is a stacked battery yeah. for what it is. So right off the bat, you are seeing what's coming with this bike. And the price at $16.99 says that is a significant find or have if you're going to purchase a bike of this style. For the battery, it's a 52 volt system. And I did mention that it was 20 amp hours. And if we use the Mica Toll constant, I can give you a rundown on what your potential range is gonna be. So a 52 volt battery, 20 amp hours, 52 times 20, and you get 1,040 watt hours, right? So the Mica Toll constant says it's 25 watt hours per mile ridden at 20 miles an hour, throttle only so 1040 divided by the 25 watt hours per mile gives you 41.6 miles now one thing to note is that there is a really awesome gear ratio on this bike yeah. and ghost pedaling is not a thing how fast did you ride 37 miles per hour so we got to tap it out at I was able to top out with a heavy pedal at 37. I was able to throttle only with some acceleration pickup to get it to 34. Which okay. That's still impressive, that's man. That's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's talk about the frame. Uh, it's pretty generic, yeah. don't you think? But it matches for the the general style that you like. I think it looks, you know, it's, it's mean enough and right. it's not too obtuse. It doesn't really stand out unless you really know what you're looking for i yeah. think the tires and the the print lettering on yeah it. when you're riding down the road or the, the trail you see the way it spins it looks good with the bike man. like a race car yeah, like a race car yeah. so aerial rider does come with uh the kepler does come with two frame styles the step through and the high step so that would be a, a high step bar about here and it would leave a larger triangle in the opening right above your battery so we like that chose the step through i like how it just follows the line of the battery and leaves right. that gap. It does dictate how the battery is removed because it's gonna come out the side here, which is key locked, instead of what you typically see is pull it off the top. It is a 26 by four frame, right? So mm -hmm. you've got these big wheels and these are the CST BFT 26 by fours with the white lettering on the black wall side of the tire and they come standard with the bike so we you know out of the box like you said i've i have other bikes that i've had to buy additional tires or i had to buy uh 
aftermarket and to get what I want. But out the box, man, it's sharp. I I think if you're looking for that kind of a look, it's it's there for you. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Really good selection on the tires for that and they give it that nice mean look. Or the racing look, not yeah, the racing yeah. look. <laughs> I know you went fast, right? No. So when you hit the brakes, how did you feel? Control. I didn't really good for like Landed, um, it was going to stop for you. Yeah, it's stop you weren't for worried me. about it. I wasn't worried about it. There is such a difference on a quality hydraulic brake. That yeah. It's just the gradual, gradual pinch while yeah. you're squeezing on that handle and it clamps that. You can actually hear that piston just humming mm -hmm. through on the the disc. And yes, stopped on a dime. Yeah. I was very impressed yes. with it. So I'm going to start this. Uh, what we're going to do is hit a concrete stripe at about 30 miles an hour plus and then see what our stopping distance is on a full grip with these hydraulic brakes. Jeremy's up there. He's going to catch another perspective, but we're going to have this on the action cam and here we go. I'm going to help pedal into this just to make sure we get up to speed. bike length over the stop line. I know you've been on those other bikes that we discussed. Um, were you ever able to pedal at high speeds with them? I mean, you can. It's not a lot of resistance, kind of more like a little ghost pedaling. But with this one here, that's another thing that steps out is you can still get that workout in even at that, you know, at that speed. And that's the 52 tooth um, chain ring. Mm -hmm. And then it has an 1134 freewheel on the back. So that 5211 gives it a really sharp gear ratio of 4.73 and that high number equates to resistance uh, at a higher revolution rate that is associated to the higher speeds that can be achieved on this bike yeah. so that 30 mile an hour range and unbelievably if you want to you can get some resistance in pedaling and i really appreciate that thought and you know the effort to make that possible with this bike agreed You've ridden all these e-bikes. Yep. Uh, what's your favorite paths selections? Uh, admittedly, the highest pass possible five. Right. But but in, in all honesty, you you probably about four or four or five. Just depends. Just the just under the top pass it gets. Some go to nine. Some go to five. So you know. Okay, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, one of the things with the Kepler is that you can set your pass allocations. Okay. Well, I did set this one to nine. That's one of my favorites too. And then with that kind of divisional breakdown then you can really see incrementally what it can do all the way up to max current limit for the bike and i like that part so i like a larger number of pass settings all the way through and i know a lot of industry yeah. bikes it's one through five and that's what you get there isn't anything else yeah. you have an event in level yes i do do you ever hook it up to your app uh, i have it I, no, no, maybe once okay. when I first got it. But. Well, in my opinion, Aventon has the best app for connectivity to their system. Um, Aerial Rider claims to have that connectivity. And yes, but the app's called like BikeWise Pro. Mm -hmm. And it's a very generic integration. So there's not much that you really want to do with the app unless you're into the tracking aspect. But they do claim it. Got to tell you, though, it sucks. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't. Not like Aventon. They could have done a little more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever get into your Aventon app? Yeah, I got into it a little bit. It, it it's nice. Um, I just honestly I use more just the the display than I will with the. And I think that's uh, something to acknowledge here. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't even go so far as to ever hook it up. Yeah. Um, but I guess it's nice to know I have the option if I want to do that tracking. But uh, for the general audience and for you, it's like yeah. don't even sweat it. I don't even pretend like it's there. Mm -hmm. Wife gave you a budget, and she says you can spend eighteen hundred dollars. 
What do you think that you would get out of $1,800 in terms of a return? And you can't speak about this bike. It's got to be 48 volt, 750. Where, where does your mind go? What, what components do you get with it? I need to have a nice display. Um, an e it actually comes with the light because some don't yeah. on that price point. Nice light frame. Uh, I need to have. I need to have an adjustable stem. Why? Uh, like to be upright. To be upright. It's that better of a feel because if you're riding for a long distance, you, you know it can hurt a little bit after a while. I like to be up, or if you like to ride down a little bit, adjust. I, I think right out of the box, them doing that instead of having any aftermarket aftermarkets like, or anything like that. You okay. know, you know, right out the box. So your 48 volt, 750 watt. You're paying eighteen hundred dollars. You do think that you should get an adjustable stem? Yeah, I be, yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, I need. I think you need to have at that rate some uh, blinkers. Uh, you you would like to have those. You like to have them automatically come out of the box with the hydraulic brakes. You know that would be another one I like. Absolutely. Uh, Front suspension. I think. Front suspension. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I need to have that as well. A nice one, um, adjustable. Uh, looks nice as well. Yeah. Compatible. Okay. I want to get into the settings. I want to be able to do more with the settings, adjust the current limit, you know, and what's actually going on. Um, and I know that some of the brands just, they don't let you, especially the speed limiting. Yeah. So, you know, the class three speed limit, 20 miles per hour. That's class two. That's the 20 miles per hour is a class two. And the class three is 28. Okay. Right. Okay. And so that's why your vent and level, right? Yeah. 28 miles an hour there. The, um, and you must use pedal assist in that setting. So at 48 volt, you're spending 800 or $1,800. What size amp hour battery do you think you're going to get? 17 and a half. Yeah. Probably around I think, there. Yeah. 15 to yeah. 15, 17 and a half. I think some of them are waking up to the 20 amp hour, mm -hmm. but you're going to generally be looking at about uh, 17, that, yeah, good for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's generally what I would expect. So when I look at these bikes and I think about all of that, 48 volt, 750 watt rear hub, 26 by four fat tire, adjustable stem, uh, some integrated settings for the bike so that I can make all of those adjustments appropriately. I, I need some control. Yeah. Um, and then a battery that has a significant capacity mm -hmm. and so you say all right eighteen hundred dollars what are we going to get um you can get an event in adventure you can get uh, a hemiway cruiser well under with budget money left over uh rad power bike all of these things every one of the collection of the components is going to be different so right. that's something to keep in mind why are we saying all of this because this collection of components is just unbelievable for the Kepler. Let's just go through them real quick. Let's check out the list of the components. You know, when you were talking, you said, I expect hydraulic brakes with check 48 volt, check 750 watt motor, check uh, what you don't expect and what's so much better about it. Uh, look at the size of this rack. Yeah. It's the first thing you notice when you walk on it. One of the first things you notice. Right? And it looks like it's, it's the truck. Yeah. It's just massive. Yeah. And in comparison to all the other bikes, it's, it's beyond uh, anything you'll see. And okay. I think it would be really good if you're delivering on a bike like this. Okay. Thousand watt motor. Does this look any different than the 750 watts? No, it doesn't. No. <laughs> Same sizing. It just, it's just there. It looks typically like any other 750 watt fat tire. So to know that that, that motor is a thousand watts is pretty impressive because it's not, it's not standing out and screaming at you. I agree. One thing that you did mention would be turn signals and this bike has them. Yeah. They are not up front. Thoughts? It doesn't bother me. It, it's more than people behind you anyway. You know, okay. It's going to notice any, you know. I agree. Uh, push button headlight. You like that? I like that. That is sharp. Nice to, mm -hmm. nice to be able to have it. Um, one thing I have noticed is that it, you have to mentally practice utilizing the turn signals. Like you never, don't always remember it. I mean, they're nice to have, especially if you're doing a little city ride and you people who actually need to know where you're going. I mean, they're, they're nice to have and they stand out and they're visible. Yeah. So. Another thing that is, really significant about this out of the box package is the adjustable stem yeah it's it's a huge it's a it's a game changer right out of the box there's no need to aftermarket it's 
adjustable. So I like to set up a little higher. I mean, it's, it suits me perfect. I think that it works well for those individuals that are taller. I'm 6'2", and it gives me the right posture uh, at that extension. And the cabling, there's enough slack in it that you can get that full upright extension. So that's, that's great for this bike. All right, today is April 20th. Uh, this Aerial Rider Kepler is priced at $16.99 online. Yeah. And we have some other bikes out, and then we'll show those to you. And what I want to talk about is the price of those bikes and their components, and more leaning towards the gear ratio and the ride. So yeah. first one up, they are in no particular order, is the Aventon Adventure V2. And what I know about it is has the app enabled settings comes for the standard class two, class three, 28 miles an hour pedal, mm -hmm. uh, pedal assist only. And then it has torque sensing. Do you like torque sensing or do you like cadence? I like cadence. One yeah, more. Uh, I do too. Cadence. I, I think the aerial rider has cadence and the thing is, when you break out the pass selections one through nine, you get a nice breakup in that. So you can mm -hmm. really find that sweet spot in between the pass settings. Yeah. Uh, if you want to do 28 miles an hour on an event and adventure, you're going to work. You are. You're going to pedal yeah. because that's what torque sensing does. <laughs> uh, that bike, $17.99. It's, it's the smaller you know, of the, of that, of that class, you know, it's still, I'm a, not the biggest guy, uh, five, nine. So I still feel like I'm big for the bike, you know, for the, yeah, yeah, yeah for even the, the large adventure. frame, yeah, yeah, even I the large you, frame. You said it. It's one of the big things. You still get that quality from Aventon, you know, but just, I felt like for that price, which is one of the higher, um, for that class, it's, you know, it could have been a little bigger. Of a feel, yeah. Like. Um, gear ratio is four and it is second place to the Kepler. Yeah. Uh, it needs it though because yeah. of the torque sensing, yeah. right? It it puts you in that position and makes you uh, you have to pedal into that thing. And so when you get into those higher speeds, you're looking for that resistance, especially on torque sensing, because you need to be there so that the bike knows that you're contributing that effort. Right. And then it's it's almost too much. Yes, the app is fancy. Mm -hmm. They did put the work in there. I do remember, however. Uh, Aventon went ahead and synced everybody's phone, updated the app, and when they yeah. synced it to their bike, the settings <laughs> got redone yep. and it caused an uproar. So keep that in mind. They do have the ability to update the app. You sync that app to the to the bike, and then suddenly they can change things. Uh, they can change all of your settings if they want to. Mm -hmm. So know that that's Aventon. Then there's the Hemiway Cruiser. My first love. That's yeah. the first outside of the my original uh, bike, which you swooped up. It's a uh, uh, personal, but it's the my first. I felt control with that bike. It's big. It's the it's what started out for me, man. It was the it's the cruiser the high. Cruiser. Or no, yeah. you had the cruiser step through the yep. white one. Yep. Um, that bike right now eleven ninety nine. Good value. And then it does not have hydraulic brakes. No, you have to get those. You have to install those. Um, but other than that, the, the frame, the, the look of it, just, and it, it does have some quality to it. I still, still, I mean, every now and then they have that it. sale for nine ninety nine, yeah, yeah. and that bike looks really it does, good it does. in terms of wanting to pick it up. Mm -hmm. You can't accessorize it. Uh, they do limit speed at 25, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's, that's kind of a downer, but eleven ninety nine right now retail. So, you know, if you're on a budget, it's something to look at, but. Mm -hmm. You, you you don't have hydraulic brakes. It's a 48 volt, 17 and a half amp hour battery, yeah. I believe. Um, it looks like the Kepler battery, mm -hmm. but it's not. Yeah, it's not close. Gear ratio on that thing, 3.29. You're ghost pedaling. You're, <laughs> you're ghost pedaling, you're ghost pedaling yeah, all the way. Are. Okay, yeah. Uh, 46 tooth uh, chain ring up front, and then it's got the 14... 28 which is just they just smacked a freewheel onto the uh -huh. rear so it you know you could use a derailleur and that's the way it's sold no real consideration towards the typical e-bike speeds which are greater than what the traditional 1428 freewheel is going to bring for a traditional bike yeah so 
And then there's the Rad Rover 6 Plus. Today, $15.99 online retail. $15.99, I'm, I'm looking at the bike again, right? So, there are things that I like about the Rad Rover 6 Plus. And I know that you, one of your favorite things is... is I know it's going to be weird, but it's going to be the uh, already installed uh, bike lock. The lock, the, the right? Lock. That, that thing clamping cool. around yeah. the rear yeah. wheel and then that chain that you can get, the accessory chain with that thing, yeah. super long, and then you just plug it in yeah. and it's done, right? You don't have to wrap it through the yeah. frame or no do code anything. Or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, nothing like that. So uh, that's one of my favorite features too. Split screen uh, display. There's one on the left-hand side and then one right down the middle. And then of course it has the traditional rad settings. Yeah. So um, torque sensing as well. Yeah, so you're pedaling. You're well. pedaling, yeah, right? Pedaling. If you wanna get up there at speed, you're gonna be working to do it. Uh, gear ratio on this one, 3.82. It is better than the Hemiway Cruiser, but not as good as the Aventon. And the, remember the Aventon has torque sensing. By the way, we forgot to mention Hemiway Cadence. We like Cadence, so yep. I guess it doesn't really matter. But these two, the Rad Rover 6 Plus and the Aventon Adventure with the Torque, you're coming out better with the Aventon uh, gear ratio, but the Rad has all these fine features to yep. it, and it just makes it that much better. Auto sensing headlight. They did think about a lower tooth count on the freewheel. It's at 1134, and that is the one thing that's saving it in terms of bringing its gear ratio up. And that is because the crank, the chain ring set, has a 42 tooth chain wheel. And yeah. it just isn't enough. It's not enough. Yeah. Then you come to the Ariel Ryder Kepler, and we've been, we've talked about the Rad Rover 6 Plus, we've talked about the Hemiway Cruiser, and we've talked about the Aventon Adventure V2. Yeah. I must also say that for a brief time, we did have electric X Peak in our hands, and mm -hmm. the wobble is an issue with these bikes, and straight out the, the bat, I believe the controller is having issues with the throttle uh, and the PAS settings, and that's what you're seeing right here. So, did not make it, but wanted to put one in front of you so you knew what we were talking about. If I'm buying something with that amount of money or that's my price range, I'm going to get a Hemiway Cruiser and I'm going to put hydraulic brakes on it. Agreed. I think. Uh, the wobble is a bit much, so that means their step through is pretty much out. The wobble was a big problem for me because of my height. If I got up on it and wanted to really pedal into it and I was up over, it would, it was extremely wobbly yeah. so uh it's not here today uh and i love the brand electric but you know i'm going to pursue electric brand e-bike for other reasons versus the 26 by 4 fat tire did yeah. you like that bike uh, it didn't stand out too much for me uh, good brand just didn't stick out more than you know the ones that i my Hemiway, my Aventon, you know yeah. or Rad Plus. i agree we know we like this thousand watt rear hub but Unfortunately, legally, it's out of its class. The, the limit is 750 watts, the legal limit for the top end class three. Okay. Having a thousand watt rear hub, the way Aerial Rider comes at it is they preset the bike so that it meets those legal classifications. And if you unwind it, then you can do that. I think that's the fair way to go about it because the speed limit on the roadway may be 60 miles per hour. But if I'm driving a Lamborghini or Corvette or some car like that, that yeah. doesn't mean that the car can't go faster. It just means that the legal limit is 60. I feel that that's the best part about it is that I can open it up if I want to. Right. Have you seen the, the owner's manual? Um, no, I haven't seen it. Uh, no guilt, no, right? No, I read yeah, owner's yeah. manuals occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, okay. uh, It's a good owner's manual and there's a lot of stuff online. And what we can do is we'll, maybe we'll make a short about yeah. opening up the advanced settings. Yeah. And then that way you can get in there, code it up 1919, and then show the, the current change and then the speed limit change. But, yeah. but that's the deal. You just get into the settings and change them. And then suddenly you have the max settings for your bike and you have all of that variability and speed capability like yeah i don't want to be down on aerial rider but uh, damn it 
What is, what is going on here? It's not them. It's all. It's all bikes. They can. I, I feel like at some of that price point, they can do a little bit better job on the seat. Yeah. You they. Know? Yeah. I think maybe. I. It's nice, right? And this handle underneath, that's mm -hmm. great. But dang, you know, if I'm I'm out cruising, I don't want to be on that seat at all. Mm -hmm. And then any little bump on the rear because it's not full suspension bike, mm -hmm. it's coming straight up through your spine. Yep. So I guess I'm I'm getting older. <laughs> <laughs> I think we pretty much covered it, but uh, you know, there's some things worth re-mentioning while we're doing this and what makes this bike stand out so much at its price point. And a couple of those things are your favorite and they are on the handlebars. Yeah, it's going to be the push button uh, light. I mean, I think that's sharp, man. The same way with the uh, blinkers. I like the badging. Yeah. Um, on the handlebars as so well. Custom cool. grips. Custom grips, yeah. It looks yeah, really good. Looks nice. Uh, one thing I did notice is that uh, the half grip twist throttle has uh, tread on it hey, and yeah, it grips, right? Yep. right? Yep. So you're not wrenching down and squeezing like you are on one of the smooth half grip twists. Even the Hemiway, the Rad, I think um, the Aventon has a left hand thumb throttle, yeah. uh, but when you're on that half grip twist, if it doesn't have these kind of treads on it, it's, it's hard, right? Mm -hmm. And, it's, and you, your hand starts to cramp. So that attention to detail is definitely worthwhile. We're put on all the other bikes. You know the budget now uh, and you know what it is. And even if you were just under budget for the $16.99, where would, you know, would you look at anything else? Knowing what I know now, no, I wouldn't look at anything else. Um... I think it's the best value for all the components you get. Like I said, with the between the motor and the battery components, and it comes automatically with the hydraulic brakes, the uh, stem extension for the handlebars, um, push favorite turn uh, signals. Yeah, my favorite, my turn signals. I love them. I don't know. I may not use them I, like everybody. I mean, they they might run out of fluid, but they're still there. <laughs> that seat though, the seat. They could they can do better with the seat. Everyone gonna... can do better with the seat. I'm going to go out on a limb and be like, okay, I can appreciate that. Uh, you know, we already got the suspension seat post yeah. and it makes all the difference. Uh, we'll leave links for those items in the description below on the video. But man, oh man, this bike just gets it done yeah. at this price point, 20 amp hours. Uh, we are incredibly pleased with it. I think second place in my head is the rad rover six plus i can agree yeah. yeah but that's out of the collection we have and if it's straight dollar value i would say look for the sale at hemiway for 9.99 and then that's going to be the closest thing you can get to this but at 16.99 no comparison rear rack thousand watt motor 52 volt battery turn signal push button headlight color display adjustable settings app enabled not that great the grip half grip twist throttle and the custom grips front suspension which is adjustable fenders 52 tooth chain wheel 1134 <laughs> free wheel 4.73 gear ratio and high and i think the controller output is 33 amps which is just insane but you need that to get those speeds, yeah. top speed that we've seen marked 37 miles an hour. But I was pedaling, uh, believe it or not, and that speaks to the gear ratio. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh my, this is the best value. Yes, we know that there are the wired e-bikes, there's 60 volts, but um, at 60 volts, you're moving into a class range and an expectation beyond what is the norm in the aftermarket uh, arena. So the, the accessories that you can get for it are gonna be a little uh, more scarce and harder to find. You guys let us know what your favorite fat tire 26 by four is uh, out there on the market. What do you have and why you think it may be better or worse than the aerial rider. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. And if you're in the area, join e-bikes of Tampa Bay, Florida guys. Facebook group, get in that Facebook group, make an event and go for a ride with your e-bike friends. Jeremy said he's gonna post some more pictures. You guys need to make the events and go for the ride. And I'm probably on overkill with this Kepler, but I'm so in love. We will talk to you next time.
Having a powerful e-bike makes all the difference. Riding up this bridge. Extra, extra, read all about it. Extra, extra, read all about it. 1,000 watt rear hub, 50 to volt, 20 amp hour battery. Extra, extra, read all about it. Hot off the press, brand new news, front page, who is this? All black on, real low key, take a guess I stand out from the rest, no contest